Hello and welcome to Tango TV. My name is Marcus, I'll be your sommelier tonight, and joining us this evening is... Dave Steiger. Excellent. Thank you, Dave, for joining us. We will be exploring Pinots from around the world today. Uh, starting with Trapiche, which is an oak-aged Pinot from the Mendoza region in Argentina. Uh, Mendoza being a region where it is uh, at the base of the Andes, so you get the maritime influence coming over, you get the breezes, but you don't actually get the influence of the actual ocean because it's all stopped by the peak of the Andes. So you get the cool breezes coming over, um, and that helps keep the climate cool so you can grow grapes like Pinot Noir, versus down further into the Mendoza region in the base where it is more desert, and uh, you get the hotter climates, which is why Malbec grows so well down there. So we're gonna start uh, and just taste, and one thing that we like to do is there's a, a little phrase called few, fruit, earth, and wood. So we'll start with what fruits you taste in here, and then we'll go on from there. So enjoy. It's interesting. It, it doesn't have as much cherry as I'm used to in a Pinot Noir from, say, California. Right, right. In Argentina, you get a lot more of the soil influence as well. That's why you get more of an earthy, rustic out of Argentina versus the Californian style Pinot, or even some Oregon where they do a lot of the heavier oak. Although this is oak aged, you do get less of that big fruit extraction out of Argentine wines. So less cherry. I I would say almost more if there is cherry, it's like a sour cherry. Yeah, agreed. I always try to think of like, you know, mushrooms or or leather or, or tobacco or, or herb sorts of qualities. And for this one, I almost get like a wet tobacco kind of. I was gonna say something smoky. Smoky, yeah. smoky works too. And smoky would again come from the oak aging. You get that when you toast the oak barrels, you get that oak, uh, the smoky influence. Um, and then wood, of course, we can taste wood on this. Uh, so there goes your last one and that is your smoky. So perfect. Um, well, I will let you enjoy the rest of that. No need to rush. And I will jump into the beginning of the Bistro Pinot Noir. Bistro is out of France. And specifically, it's a Van de Pie, but it is from the Lille de uh, Butte. Lille de Butte uh, means beautiful island in French. And it is off the southern, uh, south eastern, uh, coast of France, <laughs> um, Corsica, uh, more known to the rest of the world, and uh, this Pinot is more value-based, value-oriented, that's why it's coming from Pinot versus what you know most French wines, uh, French Pinot comes from Burgundy. Um, killer steel of a deal, this one, um, and again light, this one is going to have uh, more of an earthy characteristic, but again not such extracted fruit that you get from the Californian and the American palate wines. You also, um, in Corsica, have a, a mountain range where you do get uh, the valleys inside where you can get the cooler climate sitting and have that more um, delicate uh, climate which the Pinot needs. You can't have it in the hot sun or it'll burn the skins. So, um, take, take your time, I get finished too. <laughs> I know, I know, I just uh, wanna be ready for it. So Bistro Pinot, and then again, we'll start with the few, fruit, earth, and wood. So enjoy that, and uh, tell me off the top what fruits you get off of it. Mm. It's kind of almost like a apricot or something, almost something that you, know, you would get off of brandy. Right, yeah, well, and that comes true, that's, that's interesting that you say brandy, uh, Corsica being in the southeast and Brandy Cognac area is in the southwest of France, so you're right there in the same latitude line, so you do get similarities in soil composition, which would give you similarities in your, your profile of the nose, so very, very good palate you've got going there. <laughs> Certainly 
much wider on the finish. You certainly don't get what the Argentinian wine you had, as you said, you had like a tobacco or something yep. that was very strong. This is a much wider finish. Yep, much lighter. Um, again, they're not so heavily influenced by the oak. I'm sure it was aged in oak. Uh, being French, but they probably aged it in neutral oak, which means the barrels have been used before, so you don't get the influence of the oak. Whereas that one was clearly, that was their intention, was to put the oak influence. Um, I agree, the finish isn't as long. Um, and you do get you do get fruit right up front, and that's kind of it. It kind of is very, very simple. Um, but then if you read uh, the back of the bistro, their, their um, philosophy for the wine is a simple table wine just to enjoy with some friends in the afternoon. It's not necessarily a wine you're going to grab to impress, but it's a great wine to grab for, you know, a sunset with friends, so. so maybe it would it pair well with food? It would pair well with food. I would say uh, a simple pairing with something like this. Let's see. You could go something easy, just like a, a nice roasted chicken would be good with that. Roasted chicken, some carrots, uh, maybe some potatoes, and you've got a simple easy wine pairing meal. So that one's fun. Mm -hmm. um, and again, going back to the fruit, I'm going to say... This one has more of a cherry to it than the original, but it's like a dried cherry. It's not like a fresh, ripe cherry. More of a dried cherry flavor to it. And then even almost like a red raspberry. Not the sweetness of a red raspberry, but that, that like bright punch that you get when you first bite into it. Mm, earthy characteristics in that one. That I almost get a little bit more of that leather, that like raw hide that you get. Um, some of the tobacco, but not so much. It would be like a dried out tobacco that's kind of been left for a while. Um, and then wood, again, we're, we're saying lighter on the wood on this Absolutely. one. We're saying it's a little bit more delicate. It's been probably neutral oak aged. Is, is, is it true that the, the Americans age in French oak and the French age in American oak a lot? They like to play. Um, I would say that's more true of the American side than it is of the French. I think the French, um, though they know what it can do as far as the influence with the wine, um, French tend to believe that French is the way. So I would say you probably get more Americans aging with French oak than you do French aging with American oak. Um, but I definitely do know a great number of American winemakers who age their wines in French oak. It does give it a, a, a bit more of an elegance. Um, American oak is very strong, so you get more dominant flavors usually. Um, French oak, you tend to get more subtle, like the dill, the, the kind of uh, more rustic characteristics, whereas American oak, you tend to get bright vanilla. Um, you can get all flavors um, from both types of oak, but the specifics that you are looking for can be found specifically in certain barrels. So, um, American winemakers have found that using French oak gives them influences to their wine that they, they couldn't get with American oak. Spain uses a lot of American oak. Um, the Rioja region and the Ribera de Duero region do. Does it even come down to individual barrel makers, what kind of notes yes. you get? Yes, oh, absolutely. Um, and, and it breaks down into the toasting of the barrels as well. You can, you can uh, when you purchase your barrels from a, a barrel maker, you can choose the toast that you want on it. You can choose the specifics, and some barrel makers even break it down to what flavors it will specifically add to your wine. Um, it's kind of like yeast. You can buy specific yeasts to uh, ferment your wine based on what they're going to add to the wine's flavor. Uh, 